Okay, I'll try to make this as briefly as possible. Motivation, the activity with the paper. The students get the pairs, they try to touch the paper, they move around. So they should be intrinsically motivated to stay in the game. Um, when it's finished, we ask them a few questions. What have you learned from it? Why did you keep going? Motivation defined. Now from them playing the game, we should establish that they are, the ones who stayed in, are motivated to continue going. So the energy that they express, that is motivation. It is sustained behavior. You sustain the behavior in continually trying to touch the paper within a faster amount of time. Um, why did you stop? You were demotivated. That's the reason why you stopped. So it's internal processes that activate, guide behavior, etc. So definition is done. Is motivation necessary in the classroom? It is getting students to engage in academic activities. This is why in a lesson plan, the first thing that is done is the set induction. So students are motivated to learn. Students who are motivated to learn use higher cognitive skills and processes. So a motivated student will learn more than a student who's not motivated. When you take a look at Calvin's cartoon, he's not motivated to learn, but his energy is totally elsewhere. And regardless of what the teacher does, she can't motivate him to learn. So we're useless if the students are motivated. Motivators in among students include behaviors, patterns of behavior, positive stimuli that's in the classroom. A student may work for the recognition of the teacher, the rewards and incentives, the humanistic approach, the drives. A student will be motivated to get food. A student will be motivated because they want to self-actualize. They want to feel fulfilled. Uh, yeah, I passed my subjects, attribution theory. So with this, a student will be motivated. A student blames the results of their actions on themselves or other people. So they may be motivated by another person or they may be motivated by themselves. Self-regulated learning arousals. So you might be a person who likes to read. You might be a person who likes to play video games. So if the teacher uses video games, it motivates you more in the classroom. Intrinsic motivation is one type of motivation. Um, comes from the inside. There are four types of intrinsic motivation, self-determination, optimal experiences, interests. All of these are needed for students to be motivated. So you give an example of how someone is motivated intrinsically. Um, how teachers can use it. And Femi, you put this forward. So teachers m must provide challenges. Teachers must allow students to um, generate curiosity. So teachers must allow them to take control. So if you allow students to do these things, then they will be more motivated to act and work on their own. Extrinsic motivation is the second type. They do things to get a reward. And example is they're pretty straightforward. Um, extrinsic for teachers. Extrinsic can take away from the student's motivation because if there's no reward, then students might not want to work. So teachers have to um, praise students and look at the types of rewards that they give them. So knowledge of Erickson's theory, autonomy versus shame and doubt, it says that teachers shut down students at this age. This is the stage where a child learns um, their autonomy. So they generate their curiosity. And if a parent or a teacher says, well, look, no, you don't do this. You don't climb up the railing. You don't jump off of the bed. The child is not going to feel like they want to um, be autonomous. They want to be creative and go out there to learn and do more. The child may shut down, so they doubt themselves. So that in itself shuts down the intrinsic um, motivation. The next example there is that students lose interest as they get older, which is, I think, straightforward. The last slide, so with these things being said, teachers have to focus on um, the aspects written on this page. They must allow students to encourage them to encourage students to develop um, internal rewards, allow students to generate autonomy. They must present information to students in a manner which is catered to their background. So the student come from Cave Hill. You bring some infant KFL into the classroom so the student can familiarize themselves with it. Um, provide opportunities for social interaction. When you work with your friends, that motivates you. Um, allow students to learn at their own rate. So the teacher must be flexible. You can't be rigid. And these things impact on the motivation.